I've got some breaking news to bring you on Sky News tonight. The Chancellor's wife has announced that she will pay UK taxes on her overseas income. Uh, this follows criticism over her tax-reducing non-domiciled status. Live to Westminster. And our deputy political editor, Sam Coates. Uh, Sam, bring us up to date, then, with this breaking news. That's right. It's frankly been pretty much the worst week that Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, has had since taking office in early 2000. Not only has he today had to confirm the revelations from Sky News overnight that he was essentially uh, holding a US green card, entitling him to live in the United States, uh, all the way through his rise up the ministerial ranks and including into about 18 months of his time as Chancellor, which has prompted awkward questions. But today, just now, in the last 10 minutes, his wife, has issued the most personal statement I have seen from the spouse of a prime minister about her own private affairs, her relationship with her husband, all off the back of those revelations confirmed by the Treasury that she is non-domicile. In other words, she doesn't have to pay tax on her overseas income. Let me read you some of the things that she's saying. It is a lengthy statement, but it's unusual for a politician, so worth uh, delving in some detail. Since arriving in the UK, uh, Exhata Murti says, I have been made to feel more more welcome than I ever could have imagined, both in London and our home in North Yorkshire. It's a wonderful country. And then she goes on. In recent days, people have asked questions about my tax arrangements. Um, and to be clear, I've paid tax in this country. It's entirely legal what I'm doing. But it has become clear that many people don't feel this is compatible with my husband's role as Chancellor. Now, this bit is key. I understand and I appreciate the British sense of fairness. And I do not wish my tax status to be a distraction for my husband or to a affect my uh, family. She goes on to say that is why she is announcing not only will she pay UK tax on her UK income, but now, despite being a non-dom, she will pay UK tax on all of her worldwide income. So that's uh, a big change. She says, I've tried to keep my professional life and my personal life separate ever since Rishi entered Parliament, uh, but uh, uh, they, have w they have lived together in lots of countries overseas. Um, and she says that none of this will change her decision uh, that the India remains the country of her birth, her citizenship, her parents' home and the place of her domicile, but she loves the UK too. For a politician's wife to have to put out such a statement after what Rishi Sunak has been quite upfront in making clear has been a really difficult time seeing her dragged into the spotlight has been incredibly tough for this family. He and she will be hoping that this draws a line under it. But given the scale of the questions, it's hard to know whether it will. Now let's find out what else has been going on, going on and going wrong for Rishi Sunak today. Always looking at home here, the stateside Chancellor, this time on an official visit. But so much of his life has been here on the west coast, Santa Monica, where he comes to relax and, had things gone to plan, should have been over Easter at his holiday home. But after days of criticism over his wife's tax affairs and his own undeclared US ties, he'll now spend it here, Richmond in Yorkshire, his constituency home. Do people round here still think he's one of them? I do kind of feel they perhaps don't live in the real world because they're wealthy. The poor get poor and the richer get richer. And come on, do you think he's scraping around eating high plate beans for dinner tonight? Of course he's not. <laughs> I don't have any different views about him. He's just doing his job at the end of the day like everybody has a job to do. Rishi Sunak's boss, Boris Johnson, had to take time out from meeting the new German Chancellor to defend him. When asked, firstly, whether he knew about the fine print of his wife's tax arrangements and secondly, if Number 10 had been briefing them to the press, he said... Number one, no. Uh, number two, um, if, if there are such uh, briefings, I, uh, they're, they're certainly not uh, coming from us in, uh, in Number 10. Heaven knows where they are coming from. And number three, uh, I think the answer is emphatically yes. Uh, I think that Rishi is doing an absolutely outstanding job. This isn't ultimately about the detail of Rishi Sunak's arrangements, his wife's tax affairs or their quite sizeable wealth. This is about a Chancellor at the helm in the worst cost of living squeeze for over 50 years and whether he truly understands the challenges that ordinary families are facing. Today's major headache for Rishi Sunak, having to confirm Sky News revelations that he held a US green card entitling him to live in the United States for eight years after he left, while moving through ministerial ranks and even for 18 months as Chancellor. 
Tonight, he's arguing holding a green card didn't mean he ought to live in the US. But this American immigration expert disagreed. Certainly from a US immigration standpoint, when a person has a green card, they are meant to reside in the United States. They are a lawful permanent resident. That is the official title. And they are meant to be a resident in the US. The opposition now holding up a red card. When they're appointed to a new office, ministers must provide their civil servants with uh, all the writing, in writing, all uh, their interests. It really looks like the chancellor failed to meet the ministerial code in many respects. And given he's also failing to help people with the cost of living, I really think he now needs to go. He should resign. Rishi Sunak's most difficult period in office so far. But to remain as chancellor, he will have to accept a permanent level of scrutiny on him, his wife and his family affairs. Is this a price worth paying? Sam Coates, Sky News, Westminster.